Welcome to Kino Society with Owen Shapiro. On today's podcast, we have Joe Passarelli, cinematographer and director of photography. Joe's most recent film, Anomalisa, premiered at the 2015 Yap Tel Film Festival and won the Grand Jury Prize at 7th the second Venice International Film Festival, which is a big accomplishment. So Joe, you're pretty well known because of your work in this stop motion movie called Anomalisa, but I want to know who you were before all of this. How do you start your journey in the film industry and what drew you to cinematography? Uh, I started out um, when I got into wanting to be a filmmaker, I found out right away that I wanted to be a cinematographer. So I kind of looked into the best, um, kind of training or schools that I could find. And I came across Columbia College, Chicago. Um, and I'm actually from Chicago. So I did my undergrad studies there. And then after that, I went to uh, the American Film Institute for my graduate school. And uh, that kind of brought me out to Los Angeles. And I've been out here. I live in LA now. And um, yeah, and that was kind of what got me started and kind of most of my endeavors, probably the people I met while I was at AFI. Um, it's kind of how I got into stop motion as well. Uh, the director of my thesis film, I was the DP, he was the director, uh, Duke Johnson. He got into stop motion after we got out of AFI and he brought me on a few projects and then he and uh, Charlie Kaufman set out to make the stop motion uh, film Anomalisa and then I uh, he actually brought me on to that so it's kind of um, a journey but I still kind of in in that time through you know kind of graduating from AFI until you know, shooting more full-time now I worked as a 728 lighting technician on TV shows live action TV shows mainly and uh, different uh, lighting departments and live action films and shot uh, quite a few low budget live action films as well. And then ever since Anomalisa, I've still done live action, but I get a lot of uh, visual effects work and stop motion work. Um, Duke and I uh, recently worked on a uh, a stop motion segment of the uh, show Cosmos Possible Worlds that just premiered um, late September of this year. Um, we did the Vavilov episode. So if you guys get a chance, check that out. It's really cool. All the flashbacks are of uh, all done stop motion animation, kind of in the vein of Anomalisa, kind of like a realistic but uh, you know dreamy type of a quality to it. So have you done any animation outside of stop motion? Um, kind of, uh, part of, uh, like within the stop motion world or when I'm working on stop motion projects, a lot of the, uh, elements that get added into it are kind of photographed in an old school animation way. Um, where you basically have a camera shoot it down at a few planes of glass and they put 2d like flat images on those planes of glass and animate it. Um, of animation I've shot um, and kind of advised a little bit on just like live action elements that I've shot working with visual de effects departments and stuff like that. It's always uh, kind of working in the stop motion world. It's very, uh, or all effect shooting, it's very post heavy. So it's kind of fun. You get to, you know, work with a lot of different people to kind of all add to that image try keep everyone on the same page as well, being kind of the first one in line to start the process. Your routine as a director of photography, what does your typical day look like when shooting a movie? Well, it, it obviously depends on, on the film. Um, I think right before coronavirus, I was shooting a low budget live action film. Um, and it was six day week. So basically like, uh, you know, that like, couple months of shooting my whole life is kind of sur surrounding that movie um so you know get up get to work and kind of talk with the you know first thing always kind of find a director talk with the director go over you know plan kind of any questions she has about you know 
how we're going to cover stuff. And then from there, we kind of speak with like the AD, go over, you know, their plan for the day, make sure everyone's plans work. And then from there, I just basically peel off and start working directly with the gaffer and the uh, camera department and group department to get everything set up. So how is this routine different when you're shooting for a series? Um, you know, it really doesn't differ as much so as I think on like a series or something, there's something a, a more of a longer term project. I think that the, um, like the gaffer and the camera operators um, would be, you know, right away in that first conversation with the AD and the, you know, after I kind of touch base with the director, you know, it's kind of a more of a communal setting because everybody's been there for months. So we all kind of talk about the day as kind of a bigger group, I would say would kind of be, uh, you know, the difference on a longer series versus a movie where it's a little more intimate and you're, you know, really kind of focused on a very specific vision of, you know, the director versus a you know series there's a lot of it becomes more of a you know machine where you know got to everybody's got to make sure they you know accomplish their goal for the day yeah so i know that um in animation it's a bit different in terms of how much vision the creator has over the animators so how, how is that how much creative vision do the animators have over the directors um i wouldn't necessarily say it's it's more of like how the animators because i feel like the animators um just as a you know spectator of their work so often you know each one of them brings their own um very specific way of animating you know and it's just a you know feeling that they have or whatever um so i think you know i think when uh a director is you know kind of working with the animators i think they the, the best i've seen is when they kind of like almost cast the uh, roles you know so there'd be a certain character and they would want a specific animator always to animate that character because they you know that animators the kind of feelings come out in that character over time i remember a lot of that was done on on Anomalisa, and I think that kind of shows there were certain animators that did very specific characters, and you know, was, they kind of had that emotion after a long time of doing that character. I think that's a you know cool thing that you could do in stop motion. As someone who's seen a good um, majority of what Kaufman worked on, uh, Anomalisa definitely felt a little bit different from his other works. It's like in terms of. In terms of the writing as well, it just felt a bit, not that it's bad, it's a great movie, but it just did felt, feel very different. What do you say that you have a special technique to shoot that makes your work different from the rest? I would say I try to, um, as best I can, kind of uh, cap capture the emotion that like the director's going for, but kind of make it in such a way that it looks like real life. You know, there's kind of really nice moments in life. Um, that are are out there and you know capturing that on film and having the opportunity sometimes to just uh create it from scratch and like a you know an effects world or a miniature world or stop motion world is really fun um and i think i think that's it like i really enjoy that challenge of creating like very visually uh real yet unique real you know those those moments that you see when the sun's setting or something and then trying to create that on its own is what uh is what i don't know if i puts me above any anybody else but that's what i enjoy the most uh the biggest challenge that i like to take on and now lisa is definitely a film that serves its praise and kudos so could you tell us a bit more about the process of shooting this film uh, yeah, I mean, when we shot Anomalisa, it started out relatively low budget um, as far as stop motion films go because it was crowdfunded. And after time, um, you know, we, as a production, realized we needed to kind of get more money than the crowdfunding was providing. So it was kind of like a crossroads of the project to just keep going down the path of making the best quality piece we can 
possibly running out of money or, you know, just figuring out a way to make it work. And we chose to make the best quality thing we could. And it was a good move because, it, you know, we ended up with a good chunk of the movie being shot and we had, uh, you know, the producer set up tours of investors to come through and hop on board. And, uh, you know, luckily there was a, a few that did. And, you know, we kind of pushed forward in that same vein of trying to, you know, make the best quality we can in a, uh, a very, uh, you know, kind of like a down home setting. Everything was built on site. You know, just like everything was built in the other room from where we were shooting, where all the stages were. So, you know, people were making molds and stuff or carving stuff out of wood, printing faces last minute, you know, painting faces if they were off color, stuff like that. I think that the uniqueness and I think shows an anomaly. So. The difference is that you encounter between shooting animated films versus shooting with real life people animated films ever there's a lot more pre-planning that goes into it in such a way that uh you know me as the director of photography it really has a lot to do with what the visual effects department is doing and what the animation department is doing so i have to you know, be a little more mechanical in the way that I approach things at first, you know, I'd have a vision going, but then I have to make sure run it by a lot of different people versus live action, you know, even with a lot of pre-planning, there are uh, very spontaneous moments that tend to happen, you know, patient scout something with the 7D and then, you know, you show up with all the actors and everything, you know, you're, there's a good chance you're going to find something a little better than you did before where in animation that stuff's got to be pre-planned which also has its advantages because you have a lot of time to think about it you know a lot of emails being passed around about ideas and colors and color schemes and what different color lights need to be put where so there is a lot of <clears throat> room in, in stop motion to get it exactly how you want it so do you have a preference for either of these two um you know i I kind of like splitting my time between both right now because of the different qualities, because of the spontaneous nature of live action. I don't think I could physically be capable of shooting live action 12 months out of the year. And stop motion is a much more relaxed pace. And, uh, you know, like I've seen a lot of stuff is pre-planned. So when you show up, you know, you kind of, you know, it's, a, it's significantly more less stressful than live action because even as far as the lighting and everything, like I have a pretty good idea coming into these stop motion things where I have to put stuff um, just because space is small, you know, and a lot of stuff I've already kind of worked with the production designer to build into the sets. So, uh, and, but, you know, the live action, the, you know, that pace is quite thrilling and you know it's always fun to have the adrenaline pumping for a couple months and you know make a really cool film do you have any advice for people like me who want to pick it big in the film industry you know, cinematography or in general? best advice is just to uh just to get out there and keep um you know keep working at it as much as you can you know try to take on as many different aspects of the uh, you know the visual image as you can you know I, I did a lot of lighting work and through that was able to learn a lot about like leds and stuff like that and that has really helped me in stop motion because i've been able to kind of manufacture small little lights just with some basic like you know kind of it knowledge <laughs> you, you know and then trying to use it in a creative way so you know i think being resourceful also, you know, is a good thing, you know, if, you know, someone wants to hire you on just to shoot something small, I mean, you never know that and could end up like, you know, winning film festivals and, you know, furthering your career more than you can imagine. So it's always good just to make the best of every situation, you know, shot stuff that has gone really poorly with a lot of money on, on the end and stuff where there was no money that I personally think looks great, you know, and so does the director. So it's always, you know, whatever you kind of make of the situation is, has taken, you know, me a while to learn. But once I learned that, it's made, you know, it a little more fun 
are there any films that have inspired you in the past? Like, is there anything that made you want to become a cinematographer? Yeah, you know, I hope it's not too uh, generic or of a predictable answer, but I'm a huge fan of The Godfather Part 1 and 2. And once I, you know, went to film school early on at Columbia College and found out what a cinematographer does, I was like, oh, my God, this is, you know, this cinematographer really made this movie even better than, you know, this, it, it could have been. And I was, uh, I don't know every few years kind of watch that for a little inspiration, light stuff in a way that, uh, you know, kind of goes with the feeling and mood of the movie more so than, than a lot of other stuff that I've seen. So now that you've built an amazing career in the cinematography industry, what's next for you? Um, I'm just going to keep trying to, you know, uh, kind of, better gig try to try to get better with each job you know and try to learn from the past job so you know now there's a lot of technology coming out so i try to try to utilize that in such a way that maybe will make my job easier make me go faster you know something like that and you know being on set even if it's laid back stop motion production you still gotta you know still gotta move quickly always as a cinematographer so any little bit of stuff like that helps so i think you know in the, in the near future you know really getting into more um you know kind of high quality led stuff like that there's a lot of great uh bigger companies the carry and uh cream source are making really amazing products that have made the job of the cinematographer easier like now with the sky panel you can have some really awesome looking fire lights and cop lights and stuff that before would take you know a handful of grips and <laughs> you know well-trained grips and electricians with flags and you know what not trying to do that now with you know a really good uh programmer you know that's gonna look great now and it's very easy to do so do you have any upcoming projects? Do you have anything that you're currently working on? Yeah, right now I'm actually shooting a, uh, a pilot for um, the uh, network PYGZ, which is uh, going to be the after sci-fi and after dark, more of in the vein of Adult Swim. Um, so we're shooting a stop-motion pilot for that. Um, about a group of aliens at a bar in space. So hopefully that gets picked up. It's a fun project to be working out, yeah. So finally, where can my listeners find and connect with you? Um, you can always go to my website, uh, joepassarelli.com. And um, you know, I have my email on there and you can always feel free to you know, ask me anything. I'm always good at responding to stuff. That's all for today. Don't forget you can subscribe to Kino Society on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for your time, Joe. Well, thank you. I appreciate it.